everybody, and welcome to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, businesses, and topics that I hope that you will find interesting, entertaining, motivating, but always, always encouraging. My name is Ricky Smith, and I'll be your host. Today, I want to introduce you to Richard Dabrowski. Hi, Rich. Hi, Ricky. <laughs> Rich is the founder of Extreme Inspirations, which is a Facebook website all about motivation and who doesn't need some motivation at a time like this. So, Rich, what's going on, my friend? Uh, glad to be here. Always your biggest fan, Ricky. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here with you today. Thanks so much for joining us. It means so much. Rich, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff, but let's just jump in. Rich, tell us a little bit about yourself, because I know that you were raised in New Jersey, and you love that. Yes, I do, Ricky. Actually, yes, I was born uh, in Newark, New Jersey, St. James Hospital, okay. 1966. That shows my age, obviously. <laughs> but yes, uh, I'm a big fan of New Jersey this day. I uh, lived there almost my entire life in my youth. I uh, enjoyed the New Jersey boardwalks as always. And it's actually a shame today what they're actually going through. So oh, for I know. New Jersey always, yeah. Exactly. Uh, See, I was yeah. born in upstate New York, so I never made it down to the Jersey side, but I met you and that was enough Jersey for me. <laughs> so we're battle buddies to the thin, yes. You got it. Speaking of battle buddies, now I know that you were in the military, by the way. Thank you for your service. So Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. So thank, tell me, what prompted you to leave New Jersey to go into the military? That's actually a great story. I kind of lived a little bit on the wild side in my youth and my teenage years. The wild side? Be still my beating heart. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a big fan of the bar scene, so I would hang out in the bars. And to make a long story short, I met my future wife in the bar. She was a dancer back in the day in the 80s. They had the go-go bars. So okay. today they call them something not so nice, but mm -hmm. anyway, I met my future wife there. Long story short, we moved to Florida. Uh, we got married in Florida. I was 32 years of age at that time, my first wife. Wow. Uh, we already had kids in the family. So mm -hmm. I had an older daughter and a younger daughter on the way. So we got to Florida and I didn't realize at that time my wife was quite the spender. So ah. as soon as I got paid, I was working three jobs to make ends meet. Wow. And the money was gone the next day. We were about to get evicted within a couple months because there was no money to pay the bills. I was working three jobs, coming home. There was no food in the house. Electricity bill wasn't paid sometimes. Sometimes the water was shut off. So at that point in time, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I went on my motorcycle one day and I took a ride. I was so frustrated. I was aggravated. The church had helped us to pay one month's rent. They got us back on our feet. I didn't know what else to do. I couldn't make ends meet. I got off my motorcycle, stopped on the side of the road, and said, you know what, Lord, guide me, direct me, put me somewhere. I'm losing my mind here. I'm losing my scruples. Wow. This, is, this is driving me crazy. What do I do? I can't control this. Just got married, have kids to take care of. Lo and behold, I look up. There's a sign. Be all that you can be. Go <laughs> army. Wow. I was like, no, come on. I have everything, anything but this, Lord. I'm way too old for this. Mm -hmm. Just to bring it in, I said, all right, well, let me go check out a recruiter. When God puts something in your heart, it's there to run with. Right. I went to check out a recruiter. I walked through the door. They were like, oh, welcome. Come on in. We'll sign up. I'm like, oh, slow your pace. We're going to take this easy. Go back to the race. Give me right. information. They were like, well, how old are you, sir? I'm like, well, I'm not sir. My name is Rich. Because you know how we are with sir in the army. Yes, sir. I'm not sir, I'm Rich. So yeah, I'd like to come in and find out a little bit of information. They sat me down, gave me a quick brief on everything. I was like, well, what's the cutoff age? They were like 34. I was like, crap, I'm 32. That means I can get in. Right. So I said, all right, let's talk over some things. Come to my house. We sat down with the wife. She was for it. I was for it. Wow. Lo and behold, we got into the army. Now, I did want to go helicopters because I was a big fan of helicopters. But you okay. know how the recruiters are. They're going to lie to you every single time and put you with an agent. <laughs> so my job at that time, they got me in as a 14 Tango. And for the civilian sector, that's Patriot Enhanced Maintainer and Operator, okay. which means I deal with missiles. There you go. Um, a, yeah, I'm a, ADA. I'm a jockey. I run around missiles all day long, hook them up, and let them go. All right. Um, well, behold, that's that's my entry into the army life. Wow! And how long were you in the military? I actually retired last year, Ricky, at uh, twenty years of service. 
Thank you. you made it that's a yes. huge thing you don't find a lot of people i mean people are still retiring from the military but like you said you went in later in life and you still did your full 20 years rich that's amazing yeah there was a couple of bumps and i was a roller coaster ride but sure. i'm sure we'll discuss that and you'll pull that out of me shortly so yes but yes well, i'm proud to serve my country yeah, yes and we are so glad that you did again thank you so much for your service because it's not something that everybody does so My I appreciate pleasure. that. Now, I, now I know you said there was a roller coaster ride. Now I know a little bit of the story. Yes. Can you tell us just a little bit of kind of what went down, you know, facilitating you before you got out? Yes, I'm gonna wrap it up. I was 15 years into the military. I was the first time able to take my family to Korea. We were stationed in Korea where they gave us authorization to bring our family. Right. Cutting to the chase, pretty much. Uh, my wife had asked me to go to the mail room to check up on a package. One day, in me, I was at lunch at time with my battle boys, my friends. Uh, so our first class at this time, I actually got my rank. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting out and having lunch, uh, a nice place to eat. And she asked, can you go check up on this mail? And I was like, what's the story on this mail? Mm -hmm. So I went to the mail room, mail room was closed, it was lunchtime. Went back to eat again outside the gate, came back, also got the call again. Hey, did you go to the mail room? I said, yes, they're closed at this time. It's lunchtime. Right. She's like, no, they called me. The package is there. You need to go pick it up. So I went to the mail room. The only hole they were open this time, a little bit 15 minutes early. And I said, yeah, I'm here to pick up a package for my wife. She's been calling me about it. Mm -hmm. They gave me the package. I signed all the information. No damage, no nothing to it. I noticed that. I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want to incriminate nobody. But there was a name on the package that I didn't really care for. It was a friend of my wife's. Mm -hmm. And I signed for the package, picked up, started walking away. Now, mind you, this was a Thursday. Usually, you start to trainings on Thursday. Then, when you understand that, we do a lot of training exercises. Right. So, I'm walking down the hall, and all of a sudden, I hear, so I'm first class, Nebraska, stop. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Turn around, I see two people coming in blue coats. And they're like, can you please put your hands up against the wall? I grabbed the package from me. I'm like... Wow, okay, this is a training exercise. It's Thursday, it's arms time. No, this wasn't no training exercise. Oh, wow. They actually tried to get the handcuffs on me. They couldn't do it. They were like, would you mind being escorted outside? You're not going to give us any problems. I said, no, I, said, I don't know what's going on. Right. They're like, well, we're taking you in on questioning. We're transporting two grams of cocaine. Trafficking. Wow, rich. So, yes, I was escorted outside 15 years in the military. Now I was under CID investigation. My aunt chain command knew about this because they know what's going down, that hey, this package came. And you know when you're transporting from the States to Korea, you're looking at some prison time. Yeah, because that's international type yes. stuff. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So this was a tough time in my life. It was the I downgrade of the roller coaster. Yeah, we all have those. So you yes. got through that. And you ended up getting out of the military after a while. You still retired. No drama, yes. right, per yes. se. And yes. then, so what was that transition like getting out of the military? Because I know at this time you had told me you and your wife had, had divorced or were getting head in that direction. Um, yes. So how did you transition out of the military after 20 years? That's actually a really good question, Ricky. It's a difficult question. Uh, I was, a lot of my motivation, which I know we're going to talk about later on, started because of that one incident. But my biggest worry was to be able to get out of the military without losing all my benefits, everything I had worked hard for. I was very proud to serve in the military, love my country, and, and then everything was just seemed to be flushed down the toilet. Mm -hmm. So it was getting out of the army with an honorable discharge because I fought tooth and nail, and I stayed motivated inside because one thing that I can tell anybody that's going through a difficult time, know your character. As long okay. as you stay true to your character, you can be successful in anything you so, want to do. So you're saying your character is the thing that got you through some of the, that hard times and people's character will either show up or show out, huh? Absolutely. The devil's always on your shoulder, Ricky. You know that. And there's people that want to see you fall hard, fall oh, yeah. fast, and they don't care how much dust you collect when you're down there. That's the so good. Is, yes. Mm -hmm. Dust yourself off, get up, transition out. Yes, I did transition, and it was difficult. I'm not gonna lie. Getting out of something that I was doing for 20 years, sure. I came out. Now I'm retired. Now I'm sitting around. So that's the confusing part. What hobbies to take on? What to do in my life? Because everything in our life is a chapter. We're going. We're creating. 
And I'm one of those hypertension guys. I'm actually taking medication for that because I'm always on the go <laughs> like you. So I go, go, go. What's the next step? I can't sit around. It was good for a month. Not yeah. gonna lie. Mm. And the answer came pretty quick. Yeah. Go to your local liquor store, buy a bottle of alcohol. All right. And started going down nice and smooth. Right. Daily, I've got your little buzzer on, and the next thing I know, I'm sitting around. I'm like, oh, this isn't so bad just to sit around. Mm -hmm. But then one bottle became two, two bottles became four. Next thing you know, you're waking up to drink and go back to sleep. Wow, Rich. How long did you go through that? How long did that that phase it, go? Since being out of the Army for a year, I would honestly say it's a battle I'm still dealing with. It's not right. completely over. We don't mm -hmm. actually get over that. But I have taken charge. I pull on the reins tighter now. Right. And I've, I've been able to walk away with it. Because mm -hmm. I found out that there are things to do to make yourself better without alcohol being involved. Okay. I am currently attending college for communications and journalism. Awesome. I just don't know because you are a president. I was a Toastmasters. Yeah. So the more you keep yourself busy and occupied, the less you're going to have that little bottle in your hand to drink. Sure. Those wow. cigarettes to smoke or mm -hmm. those drugs to take. Yeah. So during that time while you were drinking and trying to find your way through, what was something that was really tough that you had to deal with during that time? Um, I think my biggest thing is because of family. My son still lives with me. Okay. And it's very important that I'm always trying to be the example and trying to be the leader. Mm -hmm. the, the object behind leader, as you know yourself, because you served as, uh, yourself in the military, is that leadership is, uh, it's not about, it's not being great because of the power. Right. It's about the ability to empower, empower others. That's so awesome. le leaders, because they have power, it doesn't make them great. We all know that. Mm -hmm. So me being a leader in my household, I have to always set a good example for my kid. Of always set the example because now he's already turned 20. So yeah. whatever, whatever I'm showing, I'm the hard cover of the book, will write the rest of his chapters in his life. Wow. So as long as I'm doing that, I'm interacting with my kid, and spending some quality family time means everything to me. Family's number one. The only thing you're going to take to your deathbed is your family's memories. You're That's not going to take nothing else. That's it. So then where did extreme inspirations come from? That has always been in my heart, Ricky, kind of okay. like yourself. We love to be speakers. We love to empower others with motivation and sure. direction and guidance. Mm -hmm. And I grew up with Jim Rohn and Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins and Les wow. Brown all the famous people. My favorite now is Eric Thomas, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Papa Preacher, there he is. Yeah, yeah. he is. He's, He's awesome. He's phenomenal. His, his energy and his yellow. Mm -hmm. But it really started with Jim Olsteen, who I'm not a big fan of, after the incident in the military with the trafficking. Sure. So I decided to keep myself busy at that point in time. And I didn't know how to do it because the command was on me. Everything was so hard on me. Sure. So they allowed me to do certain things, but under escort. The mm -hmm. few things they allowed me to have was my weekends, which I did a lot of accomplishments. And one of them was to join Hapkido in Korea. Awesome. So joining Hapkido in Korea kept me busy, kept me inspired, allowed me to do things I want to do. Cutting it all in a nutshell in one simple chapter, uh, I won five medals in Hapkido, and I got my black belt from a Korean martial art. That I is amazing. Climbed, yeah, I also climbed Gumisan, which San in Korean means mountain. I climbed mm -hmm. Lumi Sub. In the beginning, I couldn't do it. You know, you gotta have that car. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but I'm afraid of heights too, so that was also a great accomplishment. That is huge. And when I got to the top of Lumi Sun, mm -hmm. and Lumi, this kind of sounds, I know, kind of, you know, like. Uh, it's so like, cool, is, though. It's something yes. everybody doesn't do. Yes, I, I had to overcome my fear of heights. Mm -hmm. So I stood on the edge of the cliff and looked down. Wow. Now, not to say I wasn't scared. I was terrified. Mm -hmm. But then that's where I developed extreme inspiration because I already knew okay. if I can conquer anything difficult in my life, there's people out there I know I can inspire to conquer any demons they have in their lives. Man, so that is fantastic. Yes. yes. That's fantastic. So, Rich, now, are you doing speaking engagements as well? Are you available for speaking engagements, trainings, and things like that? Yes, anytime, Ricky. The same as you. We're we're both motivated to speak all the time. Mm -hmm. My biggest thing now, and I know with the COVID nineteen, every, mm -hmm. everybody's locked in. Domestic violence is on the increase, which is a shame. But yeah. before all this came in, the internet and the media and everything like that, 
Mm -hmm. I'm big on anti-bullying. Um, right. 165,000 kids do not go to school on a daily basis because they're afraid to attend. Myself, growing up in New Jersey, I was bullied. Going to sure. school, I lived in a full Italian town. I'm mm -hmm. the only Polish immigrant family. So right. I was picked on quite a bit. And back then, we had to fight. And that was all yeah. we knew. That's all we had to do. So I'm big on, on protecting our kids, making sure they get educated and knowledgeable or anything like that. So mm -hmm. yes, I'm available to talk on motivation. Mm -hmm. but I, I would love to go to schools and talk about anti-bullying and, and the power that we can give to our kids to yeah. become better citizens in, mm -hmm. in our communities. Awesome. Yes. Rich, now I know we're going to put all of your information down in the description, but just real quick, can you just give us your email address or something? How would people get in contact with you? Yes, thank you, Ricky. You can actually contact me on Facebook, and it's very simple. It's Extreme Inspirations at Extreme Inspirations, and that's with an X. There's no E in the front. Mm -hmm. Or you can contact me at Richard Dabrowski1, the number one, at gmail.com. Fantastic. I'm very simple. Military has made me forget a lot of things, so I try to make passwords and everything easy these days. So. That's awesome. And we are going to put all your information down there because we want people to get out to hear your story because you have yeah. so many great stories to tell. So yeah. first of all, Rich, I want to thank you so much for joining us. But before you go, my friend, we have a game we got to play. And the game is called... Uh, that's, my, that's my Toastmaster present. That's right. The game is called This or That. Are you ready? Oh boy, okay. Yes, I'm ready. All right. Here we go. This or that. McDonald's or Burger King? Burger King. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Handwritten note or send an email? Handwritten note. Call or text message? See in person. <laughs> Snickers. <laughs> Snickers or Three Musketeers? Three Musketeers. Ah, Halloween or New Year's Eve? Halloween. Ah, of course. How about ice cream or cake? Ice cream. Very good. And last but not least, what is your favorite Olympic sport? Oh, I would like to say track. I love watching really? them run like... I that thought for sure you crazy. being from Jersey, I thought for sure you were going to say hockey. Oh, I do love hockey, but you I know, know. Ricky, you, you caught me. You caught me. I didn't even think about them in the Olympics. Yes. New Jersey, See, I, no I'm always that. thinking for you, my friend. Yes. Rich, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, everybody, if you all want to get in touch with Rich, he will have a, his information down in the lower section there, description part. Also, while you're at our YouTube channel, please consider subscribing give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment because we really want to hear from you and hear what your thoughts are on rich rich do you have anything you'd like to tell us before we go yes my favorite quote ricky and it's been my pleasure my honor to be here it's always great to see you again my friend life is a page to be written one day at a time a chapter to be explored and a book to be reflecting back on that's an wow, extreme that's it? awesome y'all heard it here first Thank you, everybody, for watching. My name is Ricky Smith, and we'll see you next time on Extra. Take care, my friend.